Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the Sony F5 and F55 and showing you how to both create and load in both 1D and 3D lookup tables right into the camera. Uh, in the latest version, version 4.0, which just came out last month, Sony added the ability to actually load in uh, custom 3D lookup tables, allowing you to create really nice looks on set when shooting in log. So, or recording in log or raw, put the lookup table on top, and you can see that nice picture, and you can basically now modify it heavily to get a really nice look right there out of the camera. This is a really great option, but uh, applying it and loading it and creating it can be somewhat complicated. So, so I'm going to show you how to create this, uh, these looks and load them right into the camera. We're going to do so uh, by using, well, the camera here, of course, uh, an SD card, which we'll, uh, I'll use to load into the, the camera, a computer here, we're uh, running the Sony RAW viewer, uh, and, uh, and I have some footage that I shot from this camera that I'll apply it on in the RAW viewer. So I'm actually taking a, a, the RAW material from the camera. I have a reader here, uh, like so. I'm going to play it back in the RAW viewer and actually create the lookup table on top of that footage. Uh, this is just one way to do it, of course, but uh, this allows me to see, basically visualize uh, what I'm going to get in the camera. So I recorded a lens chart, as you can see here. This is a live feed. Uh, and now I have it here in the raw viewer software. So let's go look in the software and start to see how we can create these lookup tables, both 1D and 3D, uh, right in there. So uh, here's raw viewer, and I have some clips that are on this raw card here from a class that we just did. Uh, and there's the, uh, the lens chart, which I just shot recently. Uh, and I'm going to start off by making 1D lookup tables. Now, the, the, the 1D are just standard monitor LUT, as they're called in the camera. Uh, are limited in the sense that they can really only modify contrast. You really can't change color. The camera just, when you enable them, goes for, into a, a, basically a 709 color space, and then you can just adjust the, the contrast overall. Contrast is a lot, of course. It makes a big difference in the picture, but you really can't do things like uh, ASC, CDL adjustments, and et cetera. So let me show you how to do that quick, and, uh, and I think you'll need, you'll need to know this stuff because uh, to create the three lookup tables on an SD card, you really need to actually use the same folder structure. So to do the 1D lookup table, we're actually going to come into the, the clip here and go over to the parameter settings, as you see here. Parameter settings hold all of my, my settings for the clip. And I'm going to start uh, by, by choosing a custom color grading space. I'm going to go ahead and custom and select Rec. 709 from that space. Again, the color space that's used uh, in the camera is really 709 uh, whenever I'm in just standard monitor 3, 1D LUT. Uh, all right, and then I can choose a tone curve that I may like to use. So I'm just going to go with the Hyper Gamma uh, 800 curve, which you can see there has changed the image overall. Uh, and then I could actually choose to modify slightly the black levels, et cetera, if I wanted to. Uh, this, is the, this is a tone curve adjustment. Tone curve and gamma curve are sort of interchangeable. Tone curve is more accurate, but uh, you may use that term gamma curve here. I'm actually modifying the curve slightly to get a little bit different image. This is pretty much all I can really do with the 1D lookup table. But again, uh, it's a nice option. You could even choose to create uh, a lookup table that was S-log if you chose, if you wanted to, uh, based on S-log or based on a standard gamma curve. So a lot of options there. I'll start with the hyper gamma. And again, this is pretty much all I can do. Choose the Rec. 709 space and then modify a gamma curve. I could do, and I could modify the curve for red, green, and blue independently, uh, but it's, a, it's difficult to get good results like that. So uh, that's pretty much what I want. Again, you can see versus, versus log, this is a pretty big difference, so a nice setup. All right, so to save this lookup table, uh, I need to, uh, well, just click this Save As button, and under Parameter Controls there, Save As. When I click Save As, it's going to uh, open up a file browser window here, and I can choose under that the file type of camera LUT. We don't want to do 3D LUT just yet, do camera LUT, because we want to create that 1D structure, right? So I click, click camera LUT. I'll go ahead and name this Hyper Gamma uh, 709 look. That's what I created was a 709 Hyper Gamma look. A little different from what the camera has in it, but not much, just a little bit different. And below that, I'll select camera LUT model F55 type LUT and media SD card. That's what I have in the camera right now. So when I do that, it's going to make that whole file structure for me the way that I want. It's very important that this is set up. So I'll go ahead and hit Save. And now, now I'm going to my desktop here. You'll see I have this new private folder. And way in here somewhere under this folder called F55F5, PMW F555, is that 
uh, lookup table that was created just for the camera. So there it is. It's ready to go. Now, uh, I'm going to go on and make a 3D LUT now, uh, but this folder structure is important. I need to put all my LUTs in the same folder for the camera to properly read either 1D or 3D. So have that done. All right, back to the raw viewer to make 3D LUTs now. We'll do that by coming back to the program, and now I can just go a step further. I can, I can combine not only gamma changes, but also uh, other contrast, brightness, saturation, color changes within this tool. I do have to consider, though, uh, one important factor, in that the camera only works with the custom 3D LUTs in the uh, Cine uh, Gamut 3 or Cine Gamut 3 Cine space. There's a new color space that the camera has uh, that Sony has added in there in version 4, which is Cine Gamut 3 and Cine Gamut 3 Cine. These gamuts are what are sort of the building blocks to add to create the lookup table in the camera, so we need to be in that mode to probably get results both in the camera and here. Now, I can actually create the, the, the LUTs in any mode, but for, for, for the camera purpose, because the camera has to be in that mode, I really have to have S, I really want to have S Gamut 3 uh, set up on my RAW viewer. So to do that, I'll go to color here, S Gamut 3 uh, Cine, which is what my camera is set to. And again, I can start uh, by selecting a, a gamma profile and, and, and start dialing it in, right? So uh, this is, this is uh, totally... This is, all, this is all normal stuff I want to do it. And then beyond that, I can do uh, CDL, which is the ASC CDL, or color decision list, and add things like saturation, et cetera, gain, if I want to. This is standard full-on color adjustment like you would see in most color correcting tools. For the sake of this, uh, for this video, though, I'm just going to uh, make it a black and white 3D LUT by just cutting out the saturation altogether and adding a little contrast here so we can really see it working, right? So... Uh, that's that's there. I have the I have my uh, black and white LUT. Now I need to save it again by going save as and then choosing from the file type here as uh, uh, 3D LUT. And we go ahead and save that 3D LUT as black and and white. Now this 3D LUT won't find its way into the folder where I need it, so I'll have to go move it later. But we'll do that in the next step. Uh, below here under the 3D LUT parameters. Uh, I can choose to embed a couple things. One, exposure index or linear gain changes. This is actually, if I want to actually put in, into the LUT, a gain change or, expo or an ISO change, so to speak. I don't want to do that for the sake of this. I could, of course, but I'm not going to do that. And also, I could bake in viewer settings, which is basically uh, additional LUTs on the output. Um, I'm not going to do that either. Instead, I'll just bake in the input settings, which I've already set, uh, which is this, the stuff we just did a minute ago, and the ASC CDL adjustments, which I did also. So those will all go into the 3D LUT uh, sort of by norm uh, normally. Uh, and then last thing here is uh, the format, which I want to have it as Resolve. That's the format that works with the camera, so choose Resolve. Uh, and then input color space, S Gamut 3, uh, Cine 3, and that, or, S, or S Gamut 3. I'm using Cine 3 in the camera. Important to set this up again. That's what works with the camera. Uh, I'll use this Cine uh, mode here. Hit save. And now on my, on my desktop again, I'll see now I have this, this black and white dot cube file. The cube file is a 3D LUT. I'm going to move that cube file into the same folder that I had my other LUT in, which is that F55 folder there. There it is. And now I'm going to copy all this into my SD card. Now this whole folder structure, the private folder and onward, needs to be on my SD card for my camera to properly read that. So let me go do that real quick. Go down to my card, no name folder, and then go back to my desktop here, which has my whole structure on it. I copy the whole private folder right there, private, and there it is. So now my SD card's ready. Go ahead and eject it. We're ready to go into the camera now uh, to load our LUTs. So let's go over there and check that out. Put the SD card in. Back to my menu, and the first thing we have to do is make sure the camera is set up again uh, for my, my settings for Cine 3. Now, for the 1D LUTs will work in all the different modes, but for the 3D LUTs, I might as well go ahead and get into uh, shooting mode, Cine EI, which I need for my LUTs in general, and then go ahead and change my color space into the S Gamut 3 or 3 Cine. 3 Cine is more similar to DCI, where regular 3 is a bigger space than that. I think 3 Cine is a nice looking space. It's, I, I like the way it looks, so I chose that. Either way. Okay, so that the base settings are done. That's great. Now let's go uh, into the menus once more 
into, into the file menu where we're actually gonna load the uh, LUTs into the camera. So back out of here, go up to file here, file, and then we'll go down to monitor LUT. This is where monitor LUT is where we will load in our, our uh, 1D LUTs. So right now, uh, under current settings, I'll click on this, you'll see that I have six spaces for user LUTs. Right now they're all defaulted to the 709-800 thing. Uh, these are stores for LUTs. I can store whatever I want here that's on my card. Uh, this is just what's currently listed. So I'm going to go ahead and go to load SD card, which I have available because I have an SD card in there, and choose to replace the first store with my own. So click on one, monitor LUT, and then it'll show me a list including my new Hyper Gamma 709 look, which I just made. Right? So I'll go ahead and load that guy in. Execute. Cool. Great. Okay. Uh, we did that. It's in the can. It's in there now. Go back to current setup, and you can see there it is. Hyper Gamma 709. Look, who's number one? Great. Okay. Back out of there. Back out of there. Now let's go load in our 3D lookup table. All right. 3D LUT. Same thing. Current settings uh, available right now. There's four 3D LUT spaces to store things. Uh, low contrast 709 is sort of the default, but again, I can replace those by going to load SD card, and again, I'll load it into number one here, and you'll see there's my black and white cube file that's there because it's stored in the card in the right spot, so very important. So cube, load it in, execute. And, oh, voila, it actually loaded right away because my camera was already set up to look at that, that star location. But let's go look in the menus uh, to see it uh, on the side of the camera here. I can see my LUTs, I have my options now. I have uh, in, the, in the regular LUT folder, user gamma one has my new gamma profile on it. Here's the defaults and then use my number one. You can see there's the standard hyper gamma and then here's number one. So there it is and number one stored properly, good. And then also I could load in my 3D LUT on user 3D number one. There it is. So again, it's there. I loaded it in black and white, just like my just like my uh, computer settings here. That's what I expected to get. So uh, this is the process for creating and loading in 3D LUTs. Uh, I made it look easy. It takes a little while to get used to how to do it. But it's all about that folder structure, creating the right files. The raw viewer is the easiest way to do it, but you can also do uh, 3D LUT creation in Resolve. Uh, it takes a little bit of finessing, but I'll show you that in a video, another video altogether. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.